Hello, everybody. We're going to talk here about osteoporosis. This is super, super, super common. So you can expect to get at least a couple questions on this on your exam. And possibly if you're taking CCS, step three, um, you may get a clinical case scenario on this. that's going to expect you to know how to diagnose and manage this. So very, very important stuff. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right hand corner. I really appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking the box on the bottom right. And you'll get updates as I put more and more videos up. Okay, so what is osteoporosis? Well, it is a skeletal disease that causes low bone density. So it makes the... Uh, it makes the bones weaker. It makes them more porous, just like the name implies. Uh, so it's a problem of bone uh, mineralization, bone strength. Now, osteoporosis, contrary to common belief, is actually asymptomatic until a fracture. Now, there are other things that maybe a fracture is subclinical, and so there may be fractures of the thoracic spine, which lead to a hunchback, um, kyphosis, um, that, that sort of humpback uh, appearance. But generally, this is asymptomatic until fracture, and that can lead to some problems, at least on test questions. Very, very common, though. About 10 million people in the U.S. have osteoporosis, and about 34 million additional people have osteopenia. This primarily occurs in older people, particularly older women. So that you probably know, but it's important to be aware of on an exam. They will probably give you an older white lady. There are a variety of risk factors, some non-modifiable ones, including age, uh, postmenopausal, early menopause, white race. Um, those are really not modifiable. Then we have some more modifiable risk factors like a thin build. You know, you can put some meat on your bones. Uh, sedentary lifestyle, certainly alcohol, tobacco use, and uh, hypogonadic disorders and hyperthyroidism. There are also drugs that can contribute to osteoporosis. Uh, the big one is corticosteroids, but also anti-epileptic drugs um, can uh, precipitate osteoporosis or raise your risk of osteoporosis. The Objective measurement to determine whether somebody actually has osteoporosis is the DEXA scan. And the DEXA scan is the most accurate test. Now, technically, if you suspect osteoporosis, it is your best first step, but there are major exceptions, and the big exception is the one you're always going to run into, and that is if you suspect a patient has a fracture. If you suspect a patient has a fracture, your best initial step is to diagnose the fracture, and that is going to be done via x-ray. So you'll get an x-ray of the distal radius or an x-ray of the, the vertebrae, uh, wherever you think the fracture is. DEXA is the best test to diagnose osteoporosis, which may actually be our second step once we diagnose the fracture. Just some terminology here. The DEXA scan is going to give you a T-score, which is you know just sort of that normal distribution thing. It tells you how far you are from the norm. Osteoporosis is a T-score of 2.5, minus 2.5 or lower, and so that's going to be higher numbers, so minus 2.8, minus 3.0, and so forth. Osteopenia is between minus 1.5 and minus 2.5. And then osteomalacia is completely different from this, but it is worth knowing that this is a disorder of bone mineralization where the bone matrix is intact. And so here we think of things like vitamin D deficiency, for instance. The first line of therapy in osteoporosis is the bisphosphonate drugs, we'll go over those, or denosumab, which is a, a newer drug. I think in my previous video, I said it was like cutting edge, but it's certainly not anymore. Um, these are some of the risk factors. We already kind of mentioned these, but this is why uh, these risk factors are indeed risk factors. So for screening, this is fairly new. Um, we now screen for osteoporosis. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommends that all women over the age of 65 be screened with a DEXA scan. Whether or not we do it in women uh, that are younger than that depends on clinical suspicion and risk factors. So certainly if they had an easy fracture, if they're long-term smokers, long-term alcoholics, maybe they've been on steroids for something like RA, um, then we would screen these patients sooner. 
So we look, uh, as far as history with osteoporosis, usually they don't have a significant history. We look for risk factors. Um, symptoms, these patients are usually asymptomatic until they experience a fracture. So look for signs associated with fracture, symptoms associated with fracture. Vertebral pain, point tenderness, hip pain can radiate. That's suspicious of a fracture. Because these patients are at risk for easy fracture, they may not have a serious injury. So we're not going to be talking here about patients that fall eight feet off the ladder. We're going to be talking about patients you know, that maybe rolled over funny, maybe they fell out of bed, ground level fall, where we wouldn't expect you to break your hip. But indeed, it happens in these patients because they're predisposed to fracture. There's a variety of physical signs that we kind of already went over. The best initial diagnostic step in an asymptomatic person that we suspect osteoporosis, which isn't that common because remember, these t tend to be asymptomatic in the first place. Yes, DEXA scan would be the best initial step. It is the most accurate test. However, most of these patients will come in with signs consistent with a fracture, in which case we need to get an x-ray. And the way I usually do it is, let's say that a patient has a suspected fracture in one part of the body. I want to visualize the joint above it um, and the joint below it. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you fracture, you have a suspected fracture of the distal radius. I'm gonna get radiographs, yes, of the forearm, but also of the wrist and hand, and also of the humerus, because any injury to one area, there may be injuries elsewhere. Um, then other causes of bone compensation include malignancy, secondary osteoporosis, and so there's a variety of labs you wanna get. Um, so we went into this. Um, so some uh, different causes of pathologic fracture, what we mean here is uh, fractures that we just would not expect. So we think of bone mineralization and metabolic disorders, osteoporosis and osteopenia, Paget disease of the bone. So this is more axial skeleton stuff, but what you wanna think here is a patient that comes in looking like osteoporosis, but maybe they're a little younger, uh, a man, men get Paget's disease of bone more commonly than women. So if you've got a man, you should think of osteo or you should think of Paget's disease. This is a good time to get an elk foss. Um, it will always be elevated in Paget's. Chronic kidney disease with bone mineralization disorder, also known as renal osteodystrophy, osteomalacia, primary hyperparathyroidism. Remember, that's going to uh, suck the calcium out of your bones, and hyperthyroidism. Then you also need to think of malignancies. And again, this is a reason why it's really important to get that x-ray when you have a patient with a fracture. Because if you see punched out lesions, you may be dealing with multiple myeloma. If you see osteoblastic lesions, you may be looking at prostate cancer, one of the more common cancers that spread to the vertebrae. These are some labs worth doing, CBC, BMP and serum calcium, elk FOS, thyroid panel, those should be on your list. Now, if you get an x-ray and you see those punched out lesions, think multiple myeloma, get a UPEP and SPEP. If you're dealing with a younger patient, think possibly hypogonadism. So it really just depends on the patient's specific history and risks. This is sort of a, a visual uh, idea of what osteoporosis looks like. This is thoracic kyphosis. You can see it's kind of like this hunchback. Uh, and what this is due to is just progressive weakening of uh, and, and fractures of those, uh, those weight-bearing vertebral bodies. This is a uh, hip fracture. And this is a vertebral compression fracture and the arrows pointing to it. So once again, here is the problem. All right, uh, so the best initial treatment is the bisphosphonates or denosumab. Um, the bisphosphonates, remember adverse effects, the big one is pill esophagitis. These patients need to, if they're taking oral forms, they need to take it early in the morning with, on an empty stomach and they need to be upright for an extended period of time, at least 30 minutes, usually an hour. Um, with, uh, with, with these bisphosphonates, they can also get osteonecrosis. That's another common um, adverse effect that's tested. Uh, and there are a variety of bisphosphonates. And the big difference is generally the route of administration and how often you need to take them. So with alendronate, also known as Fosamax, this can be taken every day or every week. Obviously, when you're taking something every day, it's not ideal, especially the way you have to take these medications. Uh, Resedronate can be taken uh, bi-monthly or once per month. Uh, Resedronate is Actinel. 
Abandronate uh, can be taken IV form four times a year, or it can be taken in oral form once a month. This is Boniva, very, very common one just because of the route of administration. And then Zoledronic Acid, also known as Reclast, this is actually given once a year. So that's convenient as well, but it is more expensive. Second line therapy, if bisphosphonates or denosumab aren't working, uh, then we'll do Riloxifene. That's only in women, or we can do the PTH analogs like Terry paratide that would be in men or women and then calcitonin is third line and i just want to point out denosumab uh, this is a rank l inhibitor so um, it uh, it works by uh, by suppressing that mechanism that activates osteoclasts and the brand name for that is prolia and the only reason i'm giving brand names here is because these are commonly encountered so you may be more familiar with the brand names than with the generic names you only need to know the generic names for the exam. However, if you're taking CCS, it will accept um, brand names um, that are used in the United States. So to recap, osteoporosis is a skeletal disease that reduces bone mineralization and causes the bone to be weaker. On exam, usually it's going to be a postmenopausal white woman with bony tenderness. She's got a fracture. Make sure and do a uh, do an, an X-ray of the bone. Uh, kyphosis and a hunchback are clues. The best initial test when suspecting osteoporosis is a DEXA scan, but if a fracture is suspected, get an X-ray first. Um, other exam, other tests: BMP, serum, calcium, elk phos, thyroid function tests, and a PTH level. Important considerations include metastasis, particularly prostate and breast, and multiple myeloma. Test accordingly. The best first line of treatment for osteoporosis is bisphosphonates or denosumab. Vitamin D and calcium supplementation should be provided for everyone, and this I didn't mention. When you start treatment, follow up with a DEXA in two years. If there's no improvement, you move on to second line. And then remember that we screen all women at 65 with DEXA and younger if risk factors are present. Step two and step three are really moving into preventative care. So you may be expected to know this. I would make sure and commit this to knowledge.